Hey guys, Chris from Ultimate Recycler. We're doing now part six of the uh, Radio Shared House Lot Cleanup, which has become a, a bit of an epic series. Been a lot of fun. We've had some great feedback. So thanks for all your comments and thanks for watching these. Part six, I'm, I've still got another load to get from the house and that's hoping, hopefully happening next week. Uh, and that will be the final cleanup. I'm just going to take the Uton trailer and finish off the front garage. So the treasure hunting up there is pretty well finished. We've just got to tidy up. But in this part, we're just going to go through this box here. This was the box of old tools that we found in the very first episode, I think, or maybe the second episode. And I'm also going to touch on a couple of other things. Uh, Street Copper 11 picked this out in the first walkthrough and said, oh, I'd like a better look at that, that old Victorian saucepan. So we'll have a look at that. And I found a couple of other little treasures in a box just the other day that I'll share with you. But this video, we'll go through this box of tools. I haven't had a good look. Um, I've only had the look, uh, which I did on camera in, I think, the second episode. Uh, it's a nice old paint box. There's some really nice old tools in here. So let's go through this together. And before I go any further, have a guess at how much value we're going to get out of this. Now, I reckon the box itself is worth 50 bucks on its own. And if you remember back, there was a rabbit trap. There was quite a lot of old woodwork tools. A few old buggy spanners. What else was there? I forget now. A nice wood plane, which I can still see on top. But I haven't dug through it. So let's have a look through. And my guess, I reckon we'd probably get, or not counting the box, I reckon we'll probably get a couple hundred dollars worth of stuff out of this. So we'll see how we go. All right, before we get started on the box, let's look at these other things first. Okay, here's this old saucepan. Now, they're not rare. It's cast iron. And it would be from the 1800s, so I'd call it Victorian. Uh, it's probably English made, but they are kind of rare to get in good condition. Now, this one hasn't been out in the garden with a pot plant in it. It's um, not broken. It's actually got a, a nice mark on the end of the handle there. Quite often you see them with the handles rusted off because this part isn't cast iron. It's got its original lid and it's branded on top. So that's Clark's, which is one of the common ones from England. The other one was Kendrick. Uh, it's actually really clean inside. Like, well, it, obviously it needs a wash. It's got shed dust, but it's not rusty. And you could feed him give this a scrub up and boil up your veggies in it. Underneath, there's no cracks. It has got some, oh, some sort of coal residue or charcoal residue that's kind of baked on. I think it would actually say, that look like looks like it says quartz something quartz that would be a capacity it will say clark's up there might give it a quick scrub up actually and see if we can read it before we move on and there we go a quick scrub with a wire brush it will clean up better but that'll do for reading it it's a five quart number eight saucepan with a british registration number and you can date things you can look up the british registration numbers and uh, date it to when the designer is registered uh england and it's uh, Clark and Company. Is that C Clark? Now there's another initial out here. But anyway, there you go. Really nice old saucepan in great condition. Now these things are hugely heavy. Um, I'll tell you what, the housewives of the day must have been strong because I almost need two hands to pick this up empty. So, um, yep, when it was full of um, some sort of stew, you would definitely need strong arms to move that. So there we go. That's a nice find. I'm going to clean it up a bit more. <coughs> Uh, not, I'm not going to paint it black like a lot of people do. That really destroys their value in my view. I like it to look old. A little rusty, but just clean. And sometimes I'll spray them with a clear lacquer. But um, I reckon that's probably, I don't know, 60 or $70 saucepan. You just don't find them in good usable condition very often. Uh, it'll take a while to sell, but I reckon that's what it's worth. So there we go. That's the Victorian saucepan. The other couple of things I found... These are in another box, and I only, I'm only i just going to show these because they're really curious items. Uh, they're both electrical fittings. This one would have been on the ceiling. So it's, it's porcelain, and this one's got a really nice green glaze. That will unscrew. And that's where your electrical, electrical wiring would uh, connect from inside the house. These would be early 1900s, and... The wire for the light comes out of the middle there. And it would have come down like this and then looped through a weight and then back up through the pulley and then down to your actual light fitting so that you could 
the weight would allow you to move the light fitting up closer to the ceiling or bring it down if you wanted to and the counterweight and often they were nice um ornate porcelain items full of lead shot or something so that's a really nice piece nice brass um, brackets on the pulley with uh, some decoration there so you don't see those very often and I'm not sure what that's worth I'm probably going to put about $30 out in the shop someone with a, a period house would love that the other one's really unusual I've never seen one of these before now it's a switch it's a light switch but instead of your normal toggle this has a key which makes it a security type switch um, so that once you turn the light on or off with your key you can walk away and no one can touch the light or at least turn it on or off i'll see if i can undo this one-handed no i needed two hands and there's the how the switch works it's just purely a um it just rotates and it's spring-loaded and that clicks in and i can't quite do it one-handed but you can see how it operates there you turn that on you take the key out you turn it off and take the key out so what a great item i haven't seen one before i'm not sure what it's worth I'm going to probably put about $40 on that because I reckon it'd be hard pushed to find another one in good operational condition. The back's porcelain, it's undamaged. Really nice find that. I guess that's very early 1900s, probably the same era as the other fitting. So a couple of great little scores there in the bottom of a box of basically junk. Now let's get onto our tools and see what good value we've got in this old paint box. Okay, let's drag a few out of the top. This first one we had a look at in the shed. And it's a beautiful old timber wood lathe. It's got a magnificent finish on it. I'm not sure if someone's restained that. The wet, the timber itself is quite quite worn, um, so it does look like it's been refinished. But it's they've kept the beautiful old character. It's got a um, a steel base on it. This one, the blade's still in it. So I reckon that's a great piece. Doesn't need anything doing to it. It can be put straight in the shop as it is. It would probably be English. Um, the thing's probably almost 18 inches long. Um, what would I put on that? I think that's I think that's probably a 60 or 70 dollar item. Generally, these wood planes are fairly common, and they don't. Well, I mean, they are common, and they're not worth a great deal. But this one's got so much character. It's got a name there. That might have been the owner's name. Looks like it says Green. It probably will have a manufacturer's mark stamped into it somewhere. Bit hard to tell it could be writing on there it ultimately isn't going to make any difference to the price there'll probably be a mark on the oh here we go there's a mark on the the blade and it looks like matheson's and sons which is a pretty common company uh they may have been scottish uk somewhere so that's a great piece i'm going to price that one up because you just don't get them in this condition very often so if we put say 65 on that we're a long way heading off towards our $200 just on the first item. So I've probably underestimated again. I did that last time we had one of these games. Right, the rabbit trap. This is the only thing that I've actually done a little bit of checking on. Here we go, got the trap out. Now, it's a dingo brand. It's not a dingo trap. It's a rabbit trap, but it's a dingo brand. I did a little checking, and I think they were English made. Now, they're not super rare, but they're quite scarce. So... I'm not going to do anything special with this one. I'm just going to wash it up just in some hot soapy water so it dries. It'll take all the, the light surfacey uh, rust off it. I don't want to over clean it or anything. It's got the original chain with the original spike. And I reckon that's probably going to be around about, oh, I'd probably put $95 on that one. So, all right, maybe I should have, I should have gone a lot higher with my guess. But anyway, I hope you guys are still in the, in the game. Now, we are allowed to sell rabbit traps in Australia. Uh, they are illegal to use, but they are perfectly legal to sell and collect as part of our heritage. Um, so don't jump up and down too much about that. I know they're barbaric things, and I agree that they should be illegal to use. All right, next, we have this draw knife, which we had a look at in the shed as well. Most of these tools are going to be English. There will be a brand on it somewhere. There we go in the middle. It's actually quite sharp, this um, Reliance brand. I'm not sure where that was made. But the blade's in good condition. There's no nicks, and it is extremely sharp. Got its original turned timber handles. Uh, and it's quite a long draw knife. It would be probably, the blade itself would be 12 inches long. 
Uh, and I'm just going to give that a really light scrub with some steel wool just to clean up that rusty look. There's not really any pitting. It's quite good. Uh, that's going to be a $50 item. Next, we have... Oh, now that was part of a bow saw. Well, oh, not a bow saw. It's a, like, a, like an early form of a hacksaw. Uh, so we'll get all those pieces out and we'll assemble that in a minute. This item here is quite a common carpenter's tool. It's a, a bevel square. And this is difficult to do one hand. There we go. So it allows you to set angles from a square to whatever bevel you're going to set. And that locks it for scribing certain angles on your woodwork. It's a nice old timber handle with brass fittings on the ends. Uh, in good operational condition. There's not even any rust on it. It's in great condition. Uh, so probably $20 there. They're not rare, but that's a nice one. I'll write out a list of all these prices when we get towards the end. More of that saw. Now I have this unusual drill bit. I'll put all the drill bits together. I don't know anything about that drill bit at this stage. We have an old pair of some form of pliers i'm not sure what they're almost like a blacksmith tool but they have an unusual notch and thing on the end so don't know what they're for i'll do some checking on those later on now this item is a stamper it's for applying a wax seal and they were used by banks government departments and businesses i guess to some extent and this one still actually moves. It's not seized up. It's lost its wooden handle off the end. But I was wondering if it still had its original seal in there. So we might go and get a bit of carbon paper and see if we can make some sort of imprint. Now, I'm only guessing that this is going to work. I'm not sure. So there's a bit of carbon paper onto a piece of white printer paper. We'll slide it under there. Of course, it may not have a die or anything in here, but I just thought I'd see. So I'll press it down. So we'll give that a bit of force. Okay, I'll lift it up. Let's see if it made a mark on the paper. Oh, it looks like it's left something. It's actually stuck it to the paper. Because that handle generates quite a lot of force. Oh, here we go. It did work. What does it say? Um... Association Australia. I'm not, I can't quite read that. I might have to try and stamp it again, but there's certainly a stamp there. That's really interesting. I'm going to do it again and see if I can read it properly. So I put a bit of muscle into it, and we've got a much better imprint here. And it actually says Australian Natives Association, which was more widely known as ANA. Uh, and then it says Elmore Branch. It's probably upside down for that part. Yeah, you can certainly read that now. Elmore branch. There would have been a branch number, I guess, in the middle. Um, ANA was uh, basically just an, a very early form of private health insurance uh, where early natives of Australia, being people born in Australia, uh, contributed to basically a, a fund to help society members with um, illness benefits, sickness benefits and funeral costs and that sort of stuff. Started very early in the 1800s um, and this piece here would be pretty early I would say. Um, should certainly date to around 1900 so that's pretty cool. What I'm going to do with that is I'll clean it up, I'll just give it a wash and I think I'll find a wooden handle for it. I've save wooden handles as I get them and uh, we might have to drill it out a little bit because that's a fairly large diameter but it'll look so much better with a timber handle and what's that worth well I don't really know um, look I'm probably going to pull a figure out of the air on that one and just put it in the shop at maybe 75 bucks but maybe $50 is a more realistic price but I think I will go fishing a little bit there and certainly anyone who's interested in local history may have an interest in that so I'll add that to the list at, or uh, we'll write it down as 50, I think, for now. Now, what else have we got in the box? Well, there's lots of spanners and things in here. Here's another carpenter's tool. 
This one's a more standard square and bevel. Um, it's a nice solid one. It looks in good condition. Um, of course, they're imperial measurements. They're in inches, being probably most likely English again. But that one should get $20. It's a very functional old carpenter's tool, so there should be no problems with that one. We have a basically just a steel rule here. And this one is actually in inches and centimetres. Uh, possibly English or German made. It's just inches that side. Um, can't see a maker's mark. Doesn't make a lot of difference. We'll probably get... Um, oh, look, I'll just put five on that one. They're fairly common items. Now, this buggy spanner. I remember this one now. Um, oh, it's a plough spanner. I have not seen one like that at all. It looks to be in good condition. I'll have to do a bit of checking on that. But look, if, if I can't find any information at all, it might be a good one to throw on eBay. But I reckon if we do some Googling, we should be able to locate one. I'll work out a price for that. Um, look, if I was at an auction and I was going to bid on it, I would estimate that it's going to be a $50 spanner. But that's just purely a gut feeling. I don't know. So we'll do some checking on that one before we write down a the price. Uh, these more standard buggy spanners are pretty common. That's the Cleveland Axle Manufacturing Company. Uh, they're nice old spanners. That looks like it's a USA one, that one. Um, we're probably going to get $15 for that without a problem. There's another one here, which looks a bit more plain. There doesn't appear to be any names on that one. We'd probably still get 10. We might nearly go 20 on the other one and 10 on the plain one. What do we got down here? Another spanner. This is a nice old one, this one. Oops. It'll be a, an implement spanner. Uh, there's just a number. We don't have a name. Not sure on that one. But again, it's got to be at least a tenner. So I'll pull out the rest of the spanners, I guess, and we'll um, get a total for those. Okay, while well, I've been having a cuppa, I've been checking a few of these spanners on eBay and through Google. Uh, couldn't find much about this one, but I did find one on eBay in Australia, actually. And the guy was looking for $35. Now, he listed it a couple of times with no sale, but his was quite rusty. And this entire corner of his was broken clean off. Now, he didn't even mention that in the listing, so... Um, yeah, so I think he didn't get a bid, but I reckon that it has to be a $50 spanner. But what I'm going to do, I'll write it down at 50 but I'm going to run that one through eBay and start it at 50 as an auction, and that gives it scope to go higher if two collectors want it. I can't imagine a lot of collectors paying 35 plus postage for something that's badly broken. So we'll price that at 50 for now. This next one... I'm also going to run through eBay because I couldn't find one on eBay, even in the US. Um, they might not be rare, but generally if you can't find one on eBay anywhere, completed items or current auctions, generally it's a sign that they're not that common. So I'm going to value that at 20, but again I'm going to run it through eBay and I'll start it at maybe, oh, let's say 25, as an auction, and that way it has potential to do better. If it doesn't sell, I'll just put it in the shop. So we'll go 50, we'll go 25. And this one, again, I did Google the part number. It's FA354. I thought it may have been an international harvester spanner, but upon further checking, I couldn't find one. Same deal. If I can't find it on eBay worldwide, it's worth running through once. You just never know you like. So I'm going to value that at, I'll say 15 as it is, and that's I'll start the auction or maybe I'll start the auction at 20. But I'll value it at 15 for our purposes here. But I'll have potential. Again, if it doesn't sell at 20, I'll, mark, I'll put it in the shop. But I'll have potential to do better if it is rare. So, what's left with the spanners? Well, these other two are just plain buggy spanners. I've had them quite regularly. There's no brands on them. And uh, they'll. You know, I normally class them as a $10 spanner. So, $10 each for that. The only other spanners we had was this one, which I actually didn't check. It's um, an Imperial spanner, and it's a ratchet type setup. And what's the marks on there? 
can't quite read that. You probably read it through the camera better than I can. Um, I'm going to put that down at $15 for in the shop. But I might just do a quick check before I write the tag for it. And again, if I can't find one, I'll throw it on eBay. But we've got a price for now. This is a double-ended um, socket. Um, it is marked, but I don't think it's anything particular. Um, single hex sockets, probably a wheel brace or something like that. I think we'll put 10 on that straight in the shop. I don't think that's going to be worth uh, researching. Now we have uh, those other pliers and I found two other ones. They're, they're like blacksmith pliers, I guess you'd call them. This one's got really flat. Oh, actually, this one looks like it's got a indentation in it. So maybe let me know if you know what that is. It almost reminds me of a sinker mold where you'd melt something, but it doesn't seal. It might be specially designed to grab and pull something in the forge. Not sure on that one, but I'm going to price these at $10 each, and I'll call them blacksmith tools. Um, but sometimes I price things and label them in the shop, and I get corrected. But uh, that's fine. I'm happy to be wrong. That way you'll learn. But we'll call them $10 each, so that'll make $30 for those. Um, I don't think there's any other drill bits in there. These are pretty well just standard um, early brace and bit drill bits. So I usually group them up and put them at you know, $10 the lot. But we haven't got too many more. This one I think is worth pricing separately. I didn't find out what this was called. Again, if you know what this one is called, let me know. It's a pretty quirky drill bit. I'm going to put $10 on that one anyway and see how we go there. I think I found all the parts to that, but I don't know if it's complete. As in, I found all the parts I'm going to find here. What else is left in the box? Well, we've got a few bits and pieces still. Uh, this one here is what they call a washer cutter. And it's actually missing one of the blades. Basically, the centre point, you would sit it on some leather. And then you would adjust the distances between the blades. So the centre point can be adjusted as well. And there should be a blade on that other side. And you then pivot round. And you can basically cut the outside of a leather washer and the inside to create a more double circle, which gives you the washer. So they're quite common. It's an old tool. It fits in a, a drill brace, a square drive one. It's most likely English made. And because it's incomplete, I'm probably only going to put five on that one. I would normally get 10. The piece might be in the bottom. We'll see how we go. Uh, we have this spoke shave. I remember there was a spoke shave in there, which is uh, quite a common item. This is a nice one. The timber looks good. A little bit grubby, but it's um, not damaged. Blade looks okay. A little bit of a chip one in there. But that should get $15. Uh, we have an iron, a salter iron. And this one, these turn up all the time. They're quite common and they sell really, really well. And this one is in amazing condition. I've often dug them up looking for bottles and, and they're very pitted and rusted and sometimes the handles are completely rusted off them. This one is probably the best I've seen. So I'm going to give that a wash up. Um, and because that one's so neat, clean and not rusted and original, I reckon I'm going to put 30 on that. Normally I don't go that high on those, but that's a really nice example. And I said, I'll write all these on the list in a minute, all these prices. Uh, we'll have a bit more of a rummage before we get back to that. Um, I don't know what this is. It looks like... I don't know. Actually, it looks like it's broken. I have no idea. I'll investigate that a little bit more in a minute. I wonder if that, that square might fit into something on the workbench. But I don't know what this does. It's very worn. That's been hammered on top. I think that little piece of tin might have been just put in there to take up the slop. Yeah, I don't know what that is at all. Um, and sometimes when I get weird things like this, I have a little mystery item section in the shop. I can put it in as a mystery item. And sooner or later, one of my clever customers will tell me what it is. Um, it's a bit hard to even research something like this when you don't have a name on it or a brand. So let me know if you know what it is. I'm going to leave it as a mystery item and write down $10 and just put it in the shop. And I've done that before and I've actually sold things 
and sometimes the customer hasn't even known what it is. Um, you know, it's a bit of fun. Hey, now we have a couple of drill bits, and uh, Mitchell, one of my subscribers, advised that they're they're Forstner bits, which a quick Google tells me they're designed to actually drill a blind hole in timber, um, which you could do. Whereas if you use a standard drill bit, you're going to have a pilot hole in the middle. Whereas this one will give a nice blind hole that's flat on the base. On the base, so I guess for fitting large dowels into timber or something, you might want a blind hole like that. So there's another one in here as well. So we have two of those. I'm not sure what they're worth. These ones look to be in pretty good condition. I'm thinking I could probably put 15 each, 30 the pair. Again, I'm, I'm really just pulling figures out of the air sometimes. Um, it doesn't really phase me if I sell something super cheap in the shop because, as you can tell, I'm making good money out of this. And if someone gets a bargain through my shop, well, they're likely to come back. It's kind of the best advertising you can do. Uh, that looks like homemade. And I think if we read that backwards, it says green. And I found that name on a few things, so it must have been the original owner's name. And there's another one here that's been made up that says Elmore backwards, which is the small town that I mentioned that was on that stamp, the a, &A stamp. Elmore's a town about three quarters of an hour from here in central Victoria. Uh, clearly that's where the owner lived. I don't know what, oh, here's another one. What's this say? Um, brother, brothers, short for brothers, B-R-O-S maybe. So it might have been Green Brothers of Elmore, and possibly they were manufacturers. In fact, I think if I remember back to one of the episodes, we found some uh, little nickel-plated plates that said Green ma Makers or something. So they must have been manufacturers of something. And this is their toolkit. Uh, so there's some hollow punches and a countersinking tool. Uh, all in this glue pot. Some various other drill bits. And we may even find the missing bit for our washer cutter in here. No, it doesn't look like it. They've been well used. Look how that's mushroomed out. That's been hit with a hammer a lot of times. So just some random bits of metal there. Um, we have a few random wooden handles in here. And a little spark plug socket. Not real much value there. Now this is a glue pot which was used in the old days for glue concoctions and I think the theory was that the glue stayed pliable when it was kept warm so you'd put boiling water in the bottom pot and rest your glue in there and then you could whatever you were doing with the glue at the time paste it with a paintbrush or something and then it would keep the glue um, in a usable state until it sort of went hard I guess so that's my understanding on these glue pots. Uh, what's that worth? Oh, looked pretty rusty inside. But it doesn't appear to have any cracks or holes. Yeah, that's actually, look at that. It's nice underneath. Oh, that's the same manufacturer as our saucepan. TNC Clark England. Best quality. There you go. So that's in pretty good nick. We might give that a wash up and put maybe $30 on that. What's left in the box? Oh, getting down to the dregs, we have a, a sad iron, which are quite common things. I had these in a recent um, video, I think I did. I found some in a box somewhere else. Mrs. Potts iron, or known as a sad iron. Uh, sad doesn't mean they're unhappy. It's uh, an old English word for, for very heavy or something along those lines. So that's an old heavy iron. Uh, we have a scraper, an interesting old scraper. So that's, oh look, that'll clean it well. We might put tin on that. That's quite sharp too. Uh, I'm forgetting prices a bit. I think we'd probably only put five on the Mrs. Potts sad iron. It's pretty rough and they're very common and we don't have the timber handle to go with it. Uh, now this is another one of these. Well, actually this is different. This is a like a shaver for the shaving the top of posts or something. I'm not sure if it's got an exact name, but it kind of goes with these Forstner bits. But it obviously serves a different purpose. So I think we're talking 15 inch on them. I'll probably put 15 on that one as well. Um, 
couple of handles and the spark plug tool not much value in that now this thing contributed quite a lot to the weight of the box and this is a saw clamp uh, oh yeah it actually says henry distance saws on it and you would clamp that to your workbench and then you could clamp your wood saw in there and hold it nice and straight for when you're sharpening and setting the teeth so that's quite a nice one it looks in operational condition it's got a nice sort of ball and socket setup so you can angle it to whatever suits really nice piece doesn't appear to be damaged not sure what they're worth i reckon that would probably hold quite a few dollars we might even go fifty dollars on that i'll check that though before i write down the price and the last thing in here i don't immediately recognize it goes in a drill maybe it's just a chuck or a special type of chuck it's got a chain on it okay i'm not exactly sure what that's for it looks like there's some sort of ratchet set up on it drives from the top obviously and it's certainly a drill chuck so i don't know a specialized attachment for some maybe it's for one of those wall mount drills um i don't really know and i'm not sure what to price it at something like this i'd probably just pull a figure out of the air and say thirty dollars and if it sells first weekend in the shop, I think, oh, bugger, I should have made it dearer. And if it sits there for a month, then I make it cheaper. So I don't think it's anything super rare or super special. But I reckon we might we might swing $30 for it. And that's the end of the box. The box is in great condition. I'll wash that up tomorrow and put it in the shop. As I said, I'm going to put 50 on that. It's nicely sign written on all sides. So there we go. Now this video has droned on a long time. I hope you haven't got sick of my voice. Uh, I'll finish writing up the prices and we'll get a total and see how far I was off with my, what did I say, $200? How did your guess go? I think we've gone well over $200. Okay, a quick little update before we get to the price list. I did find the other blade for the washer cutter. It was in with those little bits of metal. So that's now a $10 item. So cool, that's good. I still don't know what this is, so mystery item. There you go. Uh, and one of the wooden handles I actually had been drilled out and it fits nicely on that stamp. So it's not original, but that's pretty cool. Uh, these stamps, the Green Brothers Elmore stamps, uh, they're not a lot of value to me. What I'm going to do is next time I'm going through Elmore, I think they would have a historical society or a museum or something. I'm sure they would like them seeing so it's part of their town's heritage so i'll donate those uh these little bits i actually forgot to write these down um probably only five dollars worth so we did they didn't even make the list forgot about that and there's no real value here and we didn't get enough of this so you can see how this saw worked um but there's no blade i think one end i think has wire twitched across to tension it up or something i'm not sure I'm just going to put that in with a random box of old um, tools and, and just someone can get a bit of a bonus there. So we didn't write that down. So what did our total end up? Who guessed way more than 200? I think that's what I said. Well, as usual, I'm well under $565. And wait, there was more. The rest of the lot adds total adds up to $735 and that's not even counting the box so almost $800 in one box how good is this deal working out hey that's amazing uh nothing absolutely wonderful the highest price I actually had was the rabbit trap we may or may not get that but I think it's worth it I did up the draw knife a bit more because I had a quick search on eBay and they sell readily for for anything up to 100 and this is a large size one so 65 is a real, realistic price um what else did i change in that as i said i will run some of these spanners through ebay i think and we might just happen to strike it lucky with something rare um yeah washer cutter i up to 10 so yeah there we go who guessed nearly 800 dollars? well 750 odd for the tools pretty amazing so now i've got a pile to price i've got a pile around here to give a bit of a wash up and a scrub up so there's a bit of labor goes into these jobs uh, and a bit more research and it takes time to ebay them as well 
but um there you go hope you enjoyed that i love going through old tools and um that'll finish this part it's gone on much longer than i thought it would and i'm looking forward to someone telling me what this is anyway we'll catch you in the next video the next part on this series i'll be going up to the house and just finishing off the front garage and that will probably be a fairly quick video and then we'll do more some more unboxing because if you have a glance over here i've got lots of boxes to go through thanks for watching we'll catch you in the next video bye